Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Success Great Podcast with me, your host, Hussein Talib. I have a special guest today, Crystal Holm. She is the founder of Designed Life Studio and the creator of the Designed Life Method. She is a feng shui designer and clutter expert. And she teaches soul-driven entrepreneurs how to use feng shui the right way to create peace and prosperity in all areas of their lives. Crystal, welcome to the Success Great Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, How did you start and where were you before the Designed Life Method and the Designed Life Studio? Um, How how did I get my start as a a feng shui designer? Um, (laughs) it, It was kind of by accident. Well, it was like accidentally by design, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you know, I um, my favorite toy growing up was my Barbie dream house, but um, and I played with it all the time. But um, I actually grew up in a very abusive home, and mm. um, okay. when when my when I was about eight, my parents divorced, and my my mother, but well, they both remarried. My mother remarried a um, a pedophile. Um, and I told her what was like, what was happening. And, um, she actually accused me of lying and she covered it up and, and, um, anyway, (laughs) my, and so I made a decision at that point in my life that I would absolutely never be like her. Um, and I sort of started looking for someone else to model how to be a mom or Mm. a grown woman or uh, anything, you know, and my dad also remarried to my stepmom. Um, who actually really became my first mentor and my first role model. Mm. And she was the person who introduced me to, she really introduced me to magic. Um, <laughs> as far as like manifestation and man, uh, the law of attraction and um, manifesting a different life by getting into alignment with the energy of that life. That was mm. sort of one of the things that she taught me. Um I was very young. So, I mean, when she, when she taught it to me, it was just magic, like little girl kind of (laughs) magic, you know? And, but as I grew, it was something that I always studied Um, just because of, I think my experience in trying to escape my own sort of childhood and trying to manifest something different. Mm. And um, it was a, you know, it was, I was older. I had, kids when I was fresh out of high school and I sort of was kind of in the struggle of just trying to live life and raise my children and overcome everything you know (laughs) that stuff (laughs) yeah and it wasn't until I was actually in my 30s that I I went back to school my life had kind of fallen apart um I had been laid off I was (laughs) sitting on my sofa all day watching trading spaces on television back then (laughs) and um trying to figure out what to do with myself and I was thinking about going to school I was actually trying to decide what I should go to school for Mm. um and I contemplated going to school to be a forensic psychologist I was very interested in studying the psychology of sort of how people become who they are like serial killers and psychopaths (laughs) and the monsters of the world Mm. you know you have to understand my you know I grew up in an abusive home so for me those you want to understand very, things from the inside. Yeah. I like, wanted to yeah. understand them from the inside out. How do the monsters become monsters? Um, and, and I wanted to understand that. And at the same time, I was just sitting there in a massive depression, just watching home interior design shows, which had always been my passion. I it, it had one of my few escapes, even as a child, I could decorate my room. Um, always growing up, all my friends, I was the one that everybody called to help decorate, to help design their space. I was always that girl. And so oh, cool. one day it just sort of the light bulb went on and I was like, I need to be an interior designer. I need to go to school for that. And so I started, I went to school to be an interior designer. And um, strangely enough, it was, I went to a, an, an art college, right? So there was several different uh industries right interior design industrial design graphic design all that but we had our gen ed classes together Mm. and it was in my psychology class that they wanted us to write a paper the teacher wanted us to write a paper about something related to psychology and something related to our field of study and um we could only each pick one topic he wasn't having multiples of the same 
somebody mm. else nabbed up uh, <laughs> psychology of color real quick. And I chose feng shui. Mm. And I was, I mm. didn't know a lot about it at the time. Um, at the time, it had only been really popular in the United States for about five years. And so I'd heard of it, but I didn't know a lot about mm. it. And um, I, when I, I, I'm a type A personality. I was going to get an A on that paper, yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah, really. I really dove into it. Uh, and I went to the library. I checked out all of the books they had on feng shui. <laughs> it was like a two Oof. foot tall well, stack well, of books. <laughs> that's a lot of books. Yeah. And I went home and I read them all. I studied everything I could. I wrote the best paper I could. And I wanted to understand it. I didn't feel like I did, but I had a, 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 a something, you know, I had a grasp on it a little bit, um, but I was in the middle of my college degree. And so it wasn't something I could fully shift over to. So fast forward a couple of years and I'd graduated from college and I'm in my career and I had moved to Hawaii at this point and I was working for a very high-end residential design firm. Most of our clients were entrepreneurial in their own right um household names we'll mm. just say um and so I got a lot of insight into how those very very successful people live behind the scenes right like how do they really live in their daily lives and in their like what are they doing differently yeah. that we do like it wasn't something I was thinking about it was just something I saw yeah. um which plays an important part as you know later yeah. on <laughs> but one of our clients, because uh, Hawaii is so international, one of our clients actually was from China. We mm. were designing a home in China. And um, my boss had sent the design to them. And they sent it back saying the feng shui was wrong. Oof. And they wouldn't accept it. And I had just started. I had not been there for very long at all. And my boss came to the entire team and was like, can anybody help? Does anybody know anything about feng shui? Like, I, I got to do something. And I volunteered. I was the only one that raised my hand. I was the yeah. only one that, like, put myself th forward. You, 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 had it, you had it in you because you mentioned, like, your friends were calling you to come do things for them because usually, like, I don't know the percentage, but usually people, when they come at homes and they hold something, they throw it, they put it wherever. So it's not like most people are into arranging and organizing and stuff like that. Right. It's not... It's not something that everybody just has a natural gift for. Just like mm. not everybody's a great cook. Not everybody's a great storyteller or, you know, there's all sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> and so I put myself forward to do this and immediately felt like full blown imposter syndrome. Like I didn't know if, if the client knew more about feng shui than me, like <laughs> how much do they, what, what do I really know? Like I had read some books, I wrote a paper and I tried to apply it to my life, but I didn't really know that I knew what I knew. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I took it on and I was just sort of bravely faced it. And, um, and at that point I was like, I really like this. I really like the, the combination of including it all. And so I found a feng shui college and I still kept my job. And I, on the side, I started going to classes and to learning how to do feng shui and I started applying it to my life and then um I started actually taking on clients mm, and and cool. helping them yeah. yeah and at the same time in my life I wasn't fully satisfied like I still didn't have everything I wanted right mm. I still felt like something was holding me back like my career wasn't advancing as much as I want to um you know, I didn't have the relationship that I wanted. I didn't have a lot of things like my yeah. life still, I still felt like I'd failed, I failed, you know, like, yeah, it was going, but it was such a struggle. Yeah. And certain areas is good. Not certain other areas, not so good. Yeah. And even the areas that were good were, were great, you know, mm -hmm. and they were still a struggle. It still felt all the time. Like it was hard. And so I was actually um, fortunate enough to be introduced to like a personal development seminar by a friend. Um, I had, I wasn't big on therapy, like traditional forms of therapy. I had 
when I was young and part of the tactics that my mother used was to send me to a psychiatrist and told him that the problem was I was a liar. <laughs> and so every time I would tell him I was being abused, he would address it with, you need to stop lying. Mm. So I had a lot of trauma around therapy and traditional forms. Yeah, of it, it, even, that, even the person who's trying maybe to help you is like basically not helping the case. Right, right. So I, I sort of was like, I, I knew I had healing to do. I knew I needed to change something about me to change the life that I wanted, but I didn't really know where to start. And I, 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 there were some avenues I didn't feel safe going, you know? And so I, I found this seminar, this friend introduced me and I, and I, I, I literally asked him, Is, uh, can I go to this thing? And he, <laughs> and he was like, sure, if you want to, you can. And that was sort of the beginning of my healing journey. So I was doing that and studying feng shui at the same time. And then as I started taking on clients, I, I started noticing like they would all get stuck in the same place. And mm -hmm. that would be like in, in decluttering their, their space. Like they just wanted the remedies and they didn't want to actually do a lot of changing and stuff. And um, <laughs> so I sort of was like, well, it was, it was just like a, like a mad science experiment. Like it was just me learning from mm -hmm. every client I took on would teach me something about what I didn't know yet, right? Mm -hmm. As I was, yeah. you know, and so um, fast forward a few more years and I, I, I moved back to the mainland and I was, I had decided to, I wanted to really, I really wanted to start this business and really make it a thing. And I was still working my a full-time job and I was just building this little business on the side. Like I didn't, well, you know, like I knew what I was doing with feng shui, but I didn't, now I didn't know what to do about business. <laughs> you know, how do you do <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> like, it's a different thing. Yeah, feng shui itself <laughs> and how you do things and organize and deal with spaces and stuff like that is different from who actually building your business around it. Yeah. Right, exactly. And so I, I, um, I ended up hurting myself on my job. Um, I had a very severe injury, mm. um, put me on bed rest. Oh, and I had a, a huge battle with the workman's comp insurance people. Um, it actually took almost three years for me mm. to get surgery that I needed to. Mm. So in that time, right, I was sort of stuck on bed rest and I thought, well, you know, I'm here on bed rest now, at least partly it was. I'm stuck here and I didn't have a whole lot to do, but partly it was uh, this idea of, well, now my job is not interfering with me building a business. So let me do that too <laughs> while I'm sitting at home with nothing better to do. And <laughs> I hired a business coach to help me. Um, but my body was getting worse and worse because I really couldn't get any medical treatment while I was fighting with this in, with the insurance company. Um, so it was just sort of this, Battle, kind standoff. Of battle. Yeah. yeah it was like a standoff like they didn't care that I was going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life because mm. they didn't want they wanted to prove that I was lying you know like there was it's just how insurance people are you know if you've ever had a workman's comp insurance yeah situation, insur insurance suck insurance companies suck. <laughs> so it was this sort of battle going on and then so I'd hired this coach and I was trying to figure out now how to, how do I turn my expertise into some sort of business that will support me in the event that I never can go back to work again? Mm, like, yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a strong possibility. And th that's still true. Um, <laughs> and, and so actually a few months later, my coach hired me to design her office. Mm, cool. And it all working with her reminded me of what I had learned years prior when I was working with all these under entrepreneurs about what they did behind the scenes all around their, like their self-care, their personal time. Like, how do they do all that? And so I was like, light bulb moment, like, all right, if I have to fight for myself here, I'm going to have to do self-care. I'm going to have to fix this myself because clearly I can't get help from the 
the insurance people or the medical people, every doctor that tries to help me gets run off. And um, it, so it was kind of a, a nightmare. I really felt like I had to do it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I started this. So I decided I would start doing yoga as a way to help with my body. Cause the, the worst thing at that time was mm. my body was just sort of deteriorating horribly. And so I, I decided I would, I applied what I knew about feng shui and I decided mm. I would create my space to act as like an, an engine, an, so an energetic engine. You basically use feng shui to, 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 to be, or to create a space for yourself to do some yoga basically and exercise kind of right yes but the yeah i used feng shui to really amplify the results that i would get like i would mm. do the yoga but feng shui is all about getting into alignment with the energy mm. of your space and using your space for what it is it's a 3d vision board of of what's going on in your life so if i mm. could turn that around which you know everything i had learned my whole life about manifesting magic law of attraction everything about energy mm. you know was getting into alignment with it you have to you have to be with it and everything exactly. i had learned about feng shui was like the energy flow is in your space mm, cool. and so i applied what i knew to create this space mm. and i i actually started getting better awesome um, so, okay so let's can can we define exactly what feng shui is and why it does it does matter well, it's feng shui is really the um, it's the study of the flow of energy in your space and your relationship with it. Mm -hmm. So we all have an energetic frequency, right? And and each of us has a unique energetic frequency. Yeah. And your home is really just sort of an extension of it, right? Your energetic frequency extends to to fill your whole space. But your home has an energetic frequency too. And sometimes those things can get out of alignment. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're out of alignment from the beginning when you first moved in. It's just a misaligned space for you. Um, and sometimes they can just got to get out of alignment because of what's going on internally for us, right? You're, because it's an extension of your energetic field, everything that's going on internally um, our thoughts, our beliefs, our, our, all of that will be reflected in our space. Like you said earlier, we kind of try to use our space to reflect our personality, right? We decorate it so that, you know, it, it, it's a representation of all the things that, that oh, matter yeah, to us. Yeah. It could be a sports team or it could be, you know, like it could be all sorts of styles that we choose to decorate yeah. with, but all of it the way we decorate with it and all of what we have is a reflection of what's going on inside. Exactly. And yeah. so there's this, it's just the study of, of understanding that relationship and connecting the dots so that really you can use your space as a, as a 3d vision board for your life, mm -hmm. because it reflects what's going on in your life as well as what's going on internally. It's a map to the whole process mm, cool. of getting into alignment with that energetic flow mm. of the universe to manifest what you want into your life. Oh, so, so this will drive us or drive people who do that and make alignment and make a life that we actually like and love, basically. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're in alignment with the flow of energy, everything's easy, right? You just, life flows easy, <laughs> money flows, clients flow, you know, relationships are, everything works. It's because you're in the flow of the energy. Your energy is mm. in alignment with your space and with the world. But when you're out of alignment, everything gets struggled, right? Now all of a sudden you feel like everything is just, you can't get ahead and you can't, no matter how hard you try, it's so hard and yeah. it's just, one step forward, two steps back. Especially in and this pandemic now, I don't know, uh, how do you see things with this? Like, especially a year backwards, most people maybe got stuck at home, probably, so. 
Right, right. And so it's, we're really having to come face to face with all of our own stuff. There's no, there's no escaping from it. There's no running away from it. There's no, we're not getting to numb out in our typical ways of like leaving and going to work and going here and do it. We're face to face with it all the time. Um, and we're really in that energy. So for a lot of people, what I have seen is like so much the that cabin fever that normally happens in the springtime is like yeah. um nobody has like it's just this we've been in it for so long we didn't get that that break of being yeah. able to get back out of it so we our energy for a lot of people is really stagnated um mm. because we don't the energy in the home is not getting refreshed um, by the by the movement of us leaving and coming in all the time. And we're not really able to keep wearing those masks. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people have let those masks come off, right? Mm -hmm. They're not, right? They're not doing their hair or their makeup or they're not shaving and they're not, <laughs> they're not doing all of these things, mm -hmm. right? And so all of we're all just getting really in our faces with our own limiting beliefs our yeah. own thoughts and mm. feelings and fears and exactly. traumas yeah so you you mentioned like a law of attraction manifestation and abundance so uh, in relation to feng shui and all this alignment what do you think is simple ways to manifest abundance uh, and prosperity into someone's life the easy way let's say i don't know if there is an easy way and or a hard way but, but how, how does that happen uh by decluttering all of those limiting thoughts and beliefs that are holding you in this place of scarcity mm. it, because it's not that the mm. world is abundant it's not that we need to find abundance abundance is everywhere we're stuck in scarcity we're stuck in i'm not worthy um, or I'm obligated to do all these other things first. And so we get stuck in what limits us. And those are the things that need to be decluttered out. Um, those are the things that are reflected in your space as clutter, literal clutter, physical clutter is a reflection of the mental and emotional clutter. Mm. So the thing that we can do is to declutter. Um, but if you're just, you know, like throwing away willy nilly, and not going through the process of decluttering what, what I call like decluttering your mindset where you're not actually going through the steps to, um, to, to, to let go of those limiting beliefs with the clutter. Like you're gonna, you're just gonna re because you're not letting go of what's inside. You're trying to let go of what's outside. And so you're just going to get your clutter back. Yeah, especially right. what's what's outside. Probably you can't control. Maybe I don't know. It's I, just a mirror. It's a mirror. You have to you have to shift what's going on inside. So there's a whole process of going through that de to declutter. But when you start decluttering the the even the physical stuff from your space, the physical stuff stagnates the flow of energy. And when the energy is stagnated, the money can't flow. Mm. right because the energy can't flow so if the energy can't flow nothing flows um so decluttering physical space shifts the energy and also will shift the mental mm. space and that will start shifting you into abundance mm, okay. if you start really diving into the deeper work of you know decluttering the mindset which i have a method for when you really start decluttering that then you start really eliminating the scarcity mindset stuff which allows you to fully embrace the abundance of life because it flows to you so much mm. easier so we're and you're not of, yeah. holding on so tightly to the scarcity mm, cool so you're, you're mentioning basically like uh, physical space right and you're mentioning uh the inner mindset of a person right so how do you work with your uh, with entrepreneurs or with business owners or your clients in general, what, 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 what do you work on first? Um, 
Well, I have a, I have a, a method. It's called the designed life method, mind, body, soul, home. And that's the order that we work on them in. Mm. We always start with the mind piece. Um, just like when we're doing space, because when I work with clients, what I'm working on is their space, right? I help them. We co-create designing their space together. And so we kind of have to start from a blank slate, right? Where we can't do anything that's in an already fully decorated room. We need to start by decluttering the space, which clutter is in its relationship with mindset peace. That's always the first place that we start. Because where they're trying to go and the whole reason for using feng shui to help you manifest your vision, right? Is to, to you have to shift your mindset into alignment with that vision. And so I always start there. And then the second start place, the second step pillar that we move to is the body pillar. And that is really about building in those self-care systems into your space so that your whole space, and we, and we do it using feng shui. We're very specific about where we put things because mm. that matters. Um, but it allows your space to now become an engine energetically to help you manifest. Mm, cool. So we create all the spaces, right? For what that looks like as a business owner, you know, you need space to film your podcast. Um, I need space to work on design work for clients. Mm. I, you know, we need space for this. We need space for that. We need space for all of the things. So we then create, then we use feng shui to create that space to put you in alignment and to sort of put you in the driver's seat. Um, every space has sort of a power position for the owner of that space <laughs> as the mm -hmm. business, right? So we want to put you in that position so that you're in alignment with it and mm -hmm. arrange around that. Um, mm -hmm. And then we literally decorate the whole thing. Some, some people think that feng shui, you know, remedies is ugly and and you can see them all over and that's really not true um feng shui should be seamlessly decorated into the space so that it's invisible to the eye because it's not meant to be seen it's just meant to be felt mm. and so um i skipped right over from the body pillar the soul pillar which is the next one and that's about getting you in alignment with with your vision, your vision for you, your vision for your business, cool. your vision for where we're going, and then doing it into the home. And that's the four pillars, mind, body, soul, home, mm -hmm. for how I do my work with clients. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, does this put someone in a place of like all this mind, body, soul uh, place uh, in a, uh, like it's like self-care or self-love thing? It is. It's all about your relationship with yourself because your home is just an extension of your own energetic field. It's, it's a reflection of you. How you treat your home is, is a reflection of how you treat yourself, right? Mm -hmm. It's so it's, it's, it's all of that is reflected in your, in your relationship with your space. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, the more we, the more we start putting that first, right? Putting, taking care of our space is like, is the same. It's this, it is a form of self-care, right? Mm -hmm. It's like putting yourself first, right? Cleaning your space, decorating it in a way that reflects who you want to become as opposed to the culmination of who you are right now. Mm -hmm. When I work with clients, it, it has nothing to do. Who you are right now is, is the starting point, right? Mm -hmm. That's where a lot, of, a lot of other designers design for who you are right now. When I'm working with clients, Who you are now is our starting point. Who you're becoming, that's who we're designing that oh, space yeah. for. Because the space needs to be the, the car that's going to get you there. Exactly. It's, it's the engine. It's the motor. It's the thing that moves. Mm. Because that's where we're getting into alignment with the energy that puts us into having the life that we want to have. Mm, cool. So uh, working with clients, do you see some, some of them, uh, like, say, blocking themselves or getting putting themselves on the way and stopping from progression like you mentioned all of them <laughs> we all do it every one of us does it it's a, that's 
That's all of us do it. Um, <laughs> so yes, a hundred percent. How do you um, deal with them? How do you deal with that situation? Um, well, that's why I teach my declutter your mindset method because that's mm -hmm. how we block ourselves. And so I teach them that method and, and let, and really dive into it and to become masters of it because mm -hmm. that way they can always use their space to transform their lives because they can, they can learn how to read their own space. They don't need me to tell them what their clutter is telling them. They can now read their clutter for themselves. Once they've been aligned and they're in the right position, then it's, main, then it's more like maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. And the maintenance comes from continuing to declutter and to keep the engine running properly, mm -hmm. right? You've got you've to maintain um, just like you would like an automobile yeah. i don't know if you're a car guy but Not you know much. like you've got to be you've got to be regularly maintaining exactly things as in order to keep them going otherwise yeah. it's just someday it won't, it won't work it won't start right it, it won't start it'll get all clogged up <laughs> and it won't matter you know that you're in the right place if if it's all so yeah i teach them how to how to keep themselves in so that when they start to shift because once you're physically into alignment with the space then the alignment is about you then it's just about what's showing up how do you, how do you use it because your space is a is a vision board it's a vision board for what's going on so you can use it to either tell you what's happening but also to reflect what you want to happen mm. So we're, we're working with both of those things, right? We design it so that it reflects what we want to happen. So that's just like any other vision board. It's mirroring what we want. Yeah. Um, but at the same token, it's reflecting what we believe. And so we need to be looking at it and using it as a tool to constantly be healing whatever is blocking us and getting in our way. Cool. So Crystal, what, what would you say one takeaway for this episode declutter your space <laughs> <laughs> um go on the journey go on the journey so right? it, it, on maybe, the... maybe it's tough is it tough <laughs> is it what's that is it a tough journey to do it is it really is because you're facing all of all of what's holding you back right mm. so you're really kind of you know you're you're making that courageous jump into um, becoming who you want to be, right? You're making that courageous jump into letting go of who you are now so that you can become somebody different. Mm. Um, and so we're, mm. we go through that process of really designing that from the outside in, right? Cool. So. Where can people get in touch with you, Crystal? Um, you can find me on my website, of course, at crystalhome.com. Uh, you can also find me on all of my social media, which will, will you share those links or should yeah. I? Yeah. You'll, um, okay. On all of my social media. And then actually the, the best thing is probably to, I, you can go and download my declutter your mindset method. Hmm. Um, I have it free for you to download. Um, at declutteryourmindset.com <laughs> and it's my it's my five-step method to to get started with decluttering your space um, and what that process is that you need to go through so that you can start decluttering the limiting beliefs right along with the clutter. awesome uh, again the website for declutter your mindset mindset.com awesome <laughs> well thank you crystal for being here with me today on the success secret podcast Thank you so much for having me. It's been a awesome. pleasure to be here. Me too. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.